Hi everyone, welcome to Abac Engineering, home of Guernsey Submarine. I'm actually thinking maybe it should be called Guernsey Submarines now because we've got two. I did a web log of building that one some years ago, so anybody who's seen my website will know or be familiar with that. So it makes sense in this case to do a video log. So this is what we're going to do, is I'm going to do a series of videos of rebuilding this 2,000 foot capable submersible. Scaddock was built in the 1970s and operated doing pipeline inspection. I'll put up a little bit of history about that in a minute, but uh, I bought it off a friend of mine a couple of years ago, shipped it over from the Netherlands, and this is pretty much as it arrived. I've just stripped it out, taken all the machinery or what was left of the machinery out from the inside, taken the viewports out, which was really quite difficult, and then I haven't really done too, too much else. There are no battery pods on this submarine, that's how it came. So the first job is to rebuild or make some new battery pods. I've got two lengths of 12 inch A106 pipe and I've started making the ends or the end caps and machining the end cap covers, which is going to be what we're doing in this first video. I'm making the battery pods pretty much exactly the same as I did on, on Jody B. There's a removable end cap which is bolted on. I'm just going to do that slightly different, but I've got the a106 pipe, 12 inch, same size, standard weight. And what I've done is I've made the trays. This time I've made them with, with wheels on so that you can pull the batteries out a lot easier. That'll make things a lot easier. And I've started to machine the ends. Now I've chopped, I don't know, that might have been 12 inch length off that and machined that, welded and machined that one ready. And this is the end cap which is ready to be machined now. I've welded the stainless steel ring onto the removable end cap. I've welded it on the inside, but I need to now weld it on the other side. I've ground it out as much as I can but I didn't leave enough of a gap, which is kind of my mistake. I should have left, I left a millimetre, definitely should have left more. So I don't know whether you can see that, but there's not really enough. I'm not happy with that gap there. I mean, I can sort of get the rod in, but with the flux coating, it's probably not enough. So I'm gonna, I've rigged up this high-speed steel tool. I'm gonna try and machine some of it out. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Right, let's see what happens. Got it on 25 RPM, yeah, it's as slow as this machine will go. Just finished machining, um, switch that off, and that's way better now. I can, I can much easier, I can get in there now with the rod. It took quite, it's taken about 20 minutes to machine this, but you can see I can definitely get in there now. So that's much better. I did, I shouldn't need it, I've needed to have done that. That was because I, I didn't prop it up enough. I didn't pack it out enough when I first did it. So now I can get on with doing the welding. I'm gonna weld this up outside because it makes a load of smoke. So I'm using, I'm going to go for 100 amps DC electrode negative, about 30% arc force, about probably about 30% hot start. Uh, that's right. And I'm using 2.5 mil 309 molly rods designed for dissimilar metals. I was hoping to actually dive today, but unfortunately the weather's gone really horrible, so I can't, I've had to cancel that. So we'll carry on with this. I also, well, let's put this up here. I also realized that what I was talking about in the last bit that I did, you couldn't hear a thing. So I'll just say it again. One of the reasons, or the reason I didn't um, 
restrain this stainless steel ring, which I could have done, and that would have helped it to reduce warping. One of the reasons I did that is because I don't want to get too much stress into the ring, and I can't anneal it. I haven't got annealing facilities, so it's got to be done just like this. And I think this way it's not going to have as much stress in the <coughs> in the part. So what I'm going to do now is, you can see I think we're uh, probably about halfway. So just going to carry on, same as we were before, 25 RPM, just plod on I think. It's Saturday, quarter past 11. a little bit of chatter on the final finish so I'm going to go one last pass now and I'm only going to put on 0.2 of a millimeter there and that's just to try and get rid of these last little bits of chatter which I'm pretty sure it will so let's just go final pass um, what time is it half 12 now so it's taking what an hour and a half So I'm still getting some chatter on it, somehow you can see it there, here's okay, I mean it would probably be alright because it'll seal on the o-ring but I'm not happy with it, it's not good enough, I've got to get rid of this chatter somehow, I've tried different tools, to make any difference, I don't think it's the feed rate, I'm really quite sure what to do. I'm a bit reluctant to take it off, but I can't think of any other way of making it more rigid other than welding on some more reinforcement. So I think that's what I'm going to be forced to do. But if I take this off, okay, I'll stop. <clears throat> so I'm a bit reluctant to do this, like I said, but there's not much, I don't think there's much else I can do. Um, I should be able to, to get it back into position as this, this this piece is central. It should be okay. It's just there. Yeah, it's not good enough. Right, it's coming off. Right, that's done now. I'm going to make these little pieces of welding. Every single week I say I'm going to clean the saw. I'll never get around to it because the state of it's disgraceful. Right. made these little pieces this, this one needs welding in this one I'm tempted to not even weld that to be honest because it I hammered it in and it's so tight it's only there to keep it rigid and you can see the the chatter that we've got to try and get rid of anyway that one needs welding in I might just put a run there but I'm not going to bother there because it's it's pretty tight I'm not even going to bother cleaning these up it's not critical Let's 
see what happens there. See if it makes any difference. Let's see what happens. we've got incoming. Right, so I've given up on this. I don't know if you can see. Look at all that, the chatter. I just couldn't, I couldn't get rid of it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But I've got a friend of mine who's got a surface grinder. I'm going to take it around to him. Hopefully he can sort it out. This is the other one I did, the other half, or the other piece. Look, it's absolutely spot on. I don't know, I don't know what, what I did different. It must be that this is just not as rigid as this one was. I mean, this was... This was held in the three jaw at the at the back, so maybe that was what made the difference. This has only been held on that little spigot thing, but surface grinder should sort that out. 